So I'm working on the motor home here and I noticed there's some rust on the back here. So I've had to drill out these screws which hold the top on, these three screws hold the top on, because we're rusted in and couldn't get them out. So I'm getting rid of these. Look at the state of that. There's almost nothing holding it on anyway. The brackets are rusted away, as we can see where the holes were. And uh, I thought I'd just have to do a bit of cleaning up, but this is uh, a bit more than I was expecting it'd have to do. Hmm. Had to be rebuilt some brackets. Well, that's what's left of the brackets. A couple of bits like this. Yeah. So you go ground it back now. Right back to where the paint clears it to clear metal. Those three points. Gonna rust treat it with some stuff. So I've cleaned up the fan itself, scraped all the sealant off, put some anti-rust stuff on it, painted the edge. This one here I've got the anti-rust on it, I haven't painted it yet. I had to make a bracket here, because the original ones are rusted out. I'm not gonna put brackets on here, I'm gonna leave those as they are. I'm probably just gonna plug these up with some grommets or something. But I'm gonna paint it obviously. But I'm also going to um, basically glue it. As long as it's got one bracket on there, it ain't going to go anywhere. And I'm going to use body sealant, which I've got loads of, run it around the edge and basically glue it to the body with that. And just have one bracket on the back. Um, and that'll be enough. I mean, it ain't going to go. You've got one bracket, it ain't going to fall off. And these will just have to hold it in place in your front edge. Rather than drilling more holes in the bus body and trying to sort that mess out or welding bits onto a thin panel, which is already rusting away. That's the plan. I'm going to paint that yet, yeah, obviously. It's all cleaned off. And in case you want to know how to get this thing apart to actually get that vent out, take the speakers out, take the grill off here. You've got eight nuts to undo. All right, so you can see three there. Come around this side. You've got three more there. And there's one up there. And there's another one up there. And you can get to those by taking these speakers out. And you can see through there, there's a nut. You can see it there and come around this side there's that one all right so you can just use a little uh, ratchet to get in there and you get those ones undone all right today we're taking the window out of the bus because all the windows need to come out to have new seals put in unfortunately you've got to take the windows out to change the seals we've taken this one out already you basically will cut all the way around the edge from the inside which is awkward because i've got stuff built in here which is i had enough room to do so i did this one first because this is the most awkward one to do you see we've got some dust on the fan here from the fridge got to clean it out um, got to clean that residue off the sides now, which is what Mrs. Death Bomb is currently doing. And yep, got the great jobs. And um, I've got to come over here, and here's the window. And I've got to dismantle it, I've got to take screws out here. I've got to basically bend this down a bit so I can get the glass out. And once I've got the glass out, I can get the seal out and put the new seal in, put the glass back in again, do that back up again. Clean up all these edges. I probably did that with that glass in it in case I slip or something and scratch the tent. So I'll probably clean up before I put the glass back in. And then obviously I'll clean these edges up. You know, there's dead spiders and cobwebs and stuff from everywhere. When I actually first got this thing, I actually put silicon along the top because it did leak a little bit. Some of the windows leaked a little bit. So I just silicon right down the top edge of all the windows and down the seams, like here. There's nothing to be getting in there anyway for a long time. So anything in there is going to be dead. But uh, all this has got to come off as well. Yeah, big job. And over here. Here's a box of seals. So I'll find the right ones for the thing I need to work on. Because each one's done with a certain code and I'll have to get the right code for the right one. Well, I've taken these four screws out here and one out the top, which allowed me to take out the stopper here. I've already taken the other one out from the other side ages ago. And uh, the central strip, which goes between the two windows, in between them. I've taken one of the root glasses out already. So I'll take this one out, which is normally fixed in place, but now taking that stopper out, I better slide it along and then lift it out. All right, first window is done. It's back in again. The mastic is really, really liquid. You have to watch out for that when you do that, if you do these things. But uh, it's back in. I've got to put the uh, strip around the inside again once it's done. But uh, don't do that just yet. It'll be a bit messy otherwise. Wait till it goes off a bit, then I'll put the strip around the inside. That's that one finished. All right, so doing the next window now, taking it out. Now, when I had some rust repairs done on the gutter here by a panel beater, they had to take this window out. Now, when I got it back, I noticed that they didn't actually do all the bit I wanted. You can see this stain here, because they had a hole in the spout in the gutter just here. So they did like this bit, 
I want to do this bit here as well because that's also a bit rusty, but I didn't do that. So I've been able to keep my eye on that for a while. But when I took this window out, they put all these scratches down here. I've actually been attacking it with a brush trying to get rid of it, but they, you can probably see all these scratches in here where they just knife straight up and down because I had sealant in here. It's just been scratching up and down with the knife and it's cut all through all the paint. And that's how they left it. And I got it back up, I could see they'd done it because I could see the gap and I could see all the knife marks in it. So I actually sprayed some rust treatment stuff in to try and cover it as best I could. But there is some rust developing just in here. I've been attacking this, trying to get it out. It's mostly gone. It's just surface rust. So I sprayed that stuff in there, then I put sealant down. So it's completely sealed, so water cannot get directly onto it. It's just ambient moisture in the air, right? So not quite the same thing. But I'm trying to now use this brush on here to uh, scrape all that back and go have to repaint that bit. Because the panel bit is a crap job. And then this window has been out sometime in the past. I don't know by who, but there's all these scratch marks all around it and they're, they're rusting as well. So I've had to grind all those back. I'm going to have to do some rust treatment on these. Um, this is probably the worst bit down here where the seam is, but it's not too bad, I suppose. Again, I'll, I'll do some rust treatment on that. I'm just going back to where it got clean metal. I might do some more here yet. Lots of little things to fix. All right, there you go. Rust treatment's been applied. I have to dig out this bit here. This is a whole bunch of filler in here. I dig that out because it's had a crack in it, and there's always rust uh, staining coming through the crack. So obviously I had some rust in there, so I just ran through that in the wire brush, a really thin one. Dug through the filler, right down to the rust, cleaned it out. And um, I basically just coated all this edge, all this entire edge with rust treatment. So that provides an extra layer of protection, especially around this edge here, or the outer edge. Just like around here. Um, because of getting cutting through this from the inside means you can actually cut through into the paint or scratch the paint there. So I just run right round the edge. So if I haven't nicked it anywhere, it'll be protected still. So I've got to let this stuff go off. You can see it's already doing its thing, it's going black. So it's working. And once it's gone off, I'll have to uh, put some filler in here, fill these back up again. And just in there, done the same thing here, dug in through the filler, clean those up, and um, then I can paint it all. And I'll try and paint, obviously, in here as well, which is a little bit tricky because of the opening. Um, but yeah, that's all I've got to do. Right, you can see I've now painted this bit here, so I've uh, treated it, painted it, filled it, so that's good enough for the window to go up again. I've got to need one more coat of paint on here, it's not quite there yet, I've only got one coat on it. I'll stick another one on, and that should be good enough. It's a little bit just here, which isn't quite nice, so touch those bits up, and I can put it back in. Well, last window on this side being done, got that one out now. This one's actually been really sticky. It's been really hard to get this stuff off. Just gonna have to try and smooth it out and um, hope the other stuff sticks to it okay. It's just really hard, this one. I don't want to oil it and get it off me. Oil, oiling will work, or meths or something will work. And that seam, I'll just give that a clean up. It looks like a, it's basically okay right now. Can't really see much here. It's a little bit just on the edge there. Not a big deal. It's all looking pretty good, really. I don't know if I actually showed you how to get these things apart or not. Anyway, this is the front window, obviously. I'll take, just taken it apart. What you actually have is this middle, middle strut just here, this pump. Okay, it's got two screws at each end, in this case. Most of them only got two screws at one end and one at the other. A lot of them have only got one on the top. Um, this particular window's got two. I don't know when I put one in, I don't know, but they can take two. So, you have to take out all the screws on the bottom. So there's a couple here for a stopper, those ones there for the divider, another one there for a stopper, and obviously one's there for the stopper. And then you actually move the glass out by pulling the frame apart, you bend the frame. But you have to bend it so that they, the glass goes towards the outside of the window, because the frame actually steps in. So although you can pull it out this way and twist it a bit more and actually get it through the top side so it comes on the inside of the window, it's easier to get them in through the outside of the window. So I've got these sort of outside down because of the adhesive I don't want to get it all stuck on the table what I have to do is basically pull it out and let the glass drop onto the table and then I can slide the glass out and I've taken out the divider then I've taken out the next glass which is the rear one in this case and obviously then I've got to try and grab over the seal and uh, pull it out now something these do have is by the divider just here there we go it's at the top so there's a little piece there's a little fluffy piece Make sure you don't lose that, because you've got to put that back in again. 
here's a little fluffy piece that goes in the top, right? So it's got those two screws that go through, so the divider goes up against that, and that holds it in. And you've got three bits that sit at the top there to fill the channel in. Don't lose those, you need to put that back in again. Funny. So now they're in the front window, driver's side here, and you can see a bit of rust mark here that we had an issue with rusting. It's not actually on the body of the door, it's on the bracket. So I can actually show you that in a second. Um, I knew about it being an issue, which is one of the reasons I wanted to actually fix this thing too. So just like all the other ones, it all comes out glued in. Right, exactly the same setup. The four clips hold it in, and then it's glued, just like all the other windows. So here is the window. I've already stripped it down, obviously. Exactly the same deal as the other ones. Cut the screws at the bottom, screw at the top, take the divider out, pull the, um, well, take the divider out as part of stripping down. Once you've untuned screws at one end or the other, you can pull the frame down a bit, pull the glass out, pull the divider out when you're taking all the screws out, pull the other glass out, done. Now this bracket, which is the one which is rusty, crap laying around. This is actually riveted into the frame. So I see I've been like, giving it a scrape. It's obviously powder coated and it's, all this rust is behind it. So all that sort of come off. And it's rusted obviously from the outside inwards, right? From the bottom part. And it's working its way up, right? So this is what needs fixing. It seems to be intact enough to be okay. Yeah, luckily, I'd have to remake it, that'd be fun. I could remake it. I, I do have steel here. I could easily make one, but I'd rather just keep everything original and not have to mess around with it. I think it's still in good enough shape to be okay. Let's see, clean it up a little bit. See what happens when I just grind this rust off. But so that's riveted in. So it's a drill these rivets here. It's got four rivets in it, four millimeter rivets. And that's what holds the thing in there. It's a shame it wasn't screwy, it wouldn't be a bit easier. But uh, yeah. Bit of a pain. But I need to fix this before I can do the rest of it. Because then I've got to rivet it back in again. And hopefully I've got rivets which will do the job. Now I've you know, drilled it out. Mm, hopefully. So I've taken off the rest of the powder coating where it matters. You can see it's crept up all the way up to the top basically. I left a little bit there on the hook because it's actually not got rust behind that. Not quite. But you can see it's getting close to it. All right, so I've cut it off there and I'm going to treat obviously the rest of it. I've got to grind it all back with a wire wheel and um, clean that up and see what we're left with. Hopefully there's enough meat left on it. It's pretty thin. <laughs> we'll see. Um, I might be able to reinforce it if I need to. I might be able to get some thin steel and weld a bit of thin steel to it. Or maybe even if I have to, I could make a new L-shaped piece and cut it off here or something and weld them together. The sorts of things I could do. I do have some thin enough steel about the same thickness as this actually. So um, I do have something I can actually make a new piece with or repair this one with. But uh, yeah, I'm going to try and recover this one. See how we go with it. But the fact that it's travelled all the way up to here from the very bottom, it's only just this little bit here which I started out at, it's wicked all the way up, which is why when you're doing paint repair stuff and rust repairs, you have to take the paint back to bare metal. You can't go any rust up to the edge of the paint, you have to go right past that, so that any wicking is not there, because you will wick underneath the paint and stuff like that, so this is obviously powder coated, slightly different, very much the same principle. You have to make sure that it's taken right back, because this will just wick all the way up, and it does the same thing on paintwork and bodywork. So yeah, that's where you take it back to bare metal. So now I've attacked this thing with a wire brush and as you can see, there's a lot of pitting and uh, even some holes in it. It's a bit of a mess. I think there's still just enough meat left on it to be okay, but yeah, I might put some weld on or maybe weld a plate over it and reinforce it slightly. It will affect the fitment though, if I do that. So if I shove this through here, shove it in place like that. It's got a gap down that side like that and that little channel there is where the little seam like concealant strip that goes around the inside of the window goes goes into the channel there right so it's a little trim which goes in. Now I've got some room it would mean sacrificing the trim a little bit in that spot but it would mean I could actually then reinforce that. I could weld a piece on there and make that much stronger and just replace like you know weld over this bit. I mean I could also potentially just do some really fine welding. I mean I could even just try and run welding over it and just actually try and reinforce it by adding weld to it 
and then grinding that back rather than rolling a plate on. Um, but it's pretty thin, I'm more likely to burn holes in it than anything else. I could give it a go so we can build it up. If it doesn't work, then I'll just put a plate on. Yeah, bit of work. All right, so I spent a, a while now building this up with weld. It's pretty hard to do because you end up with a whole bunch of inclusions and stuff because you've got to try and build up the bits where it burns through because of the rust. So you just keep you know, building it up, grinding it, building up, grinding it. It ain't pretty. It's got some inclusions in there. Do I care? No, not really. I mean, I could get it perfect and spend another hour on it and get it perfect, but I'm not going to do that. It's strong. It's going to do the job. I can paint that now. Well, rust treat it and paint it and um, put it back on. That was a pain. Okay, there's a bracket all painted up, ready to go back on. It's certainly a lot better than the rusty mess it was before. Just not through there, poorly fitted rubber seal. So I was going to potentially re this hose because the dimensions did change on this. It did shrink slightly from the welding and grinding. It's uh, distorted this way a little bit and these holes got slightly closer together. So I'm going to have to uh, drill a couple more holes. I'm going to use the front ones as the basis for where it should be because that would have moved that way but this one has moved. So I'm going to use it from that point and drill some new holes at the back there. And to cure that in, I'm going to use some body sealer as well, like seam sealer, pop automotive stuff, to stop this from getting wet all in the area to help protect it. And then I've got to make sure that it's actually going to sit against the window properly, because it could all be bent and twisted and stuff as well. In fact, it likely is. So we're now doing the last window. I'm not doing this because that's fixed anyway. This is one which I expect to be a pain. We've already done all the others on this side, all done. Mrs. Death Bomb is cleaning this leader off. And this has had a accident in the past where the back end got damaged. I think it got rear-ended by something. And I noticed that when I was fitting it out, doing the roof stuff. And I suspected there were some issues behind here. And there was a little bit of rust behind this sealant stuff here. It's like a layer of sealant. And if I pick on this, you see this bit here has got rust behind it. So I'm going to have to take the sealer off. And take all that sealer off this whole section. And get this rust treated. Yeah, and then replace it and get it all nice again. So that's what I think I need to do there. But this has been, it's definitely been worked on before. So, yeah, it's been fun. This one was a nightmare to get out to. And here is the last seal. I was really grateful to be able to get these things online. I mean, this bus is over 20 years old and I was able to find replacement seals for it, which is brilliant. I was a bit worried about getting seals for it. It did take a little bit of tweaking to get them in position. Um, You've got to try and get my a lip and stuff like that inside here. But they're perfect fits. I've had a single one yet which is not a good fit. I think. Actually, no, I've had one which is not a good fit. I've had one, and that was on the passenger side window over there. It's got like a little lip on the seal. Anyway, I'll try and show it here. There's a little lip just there. And the seal is supposed to fit inside that lip. So as you push it in, the edge there hooks into that little lip there. And um, that passenger window we wouldn't do it the seal was sitting a bit high like the seal was very slightly too big on that side and it's a bit weird I don't know. It, it still works but uh, it's just not quite fitting quite right just down one edge it's really weird so on the side of the bus here there's previous damage which has been repaired which I mentioned and I've dug out all this seam that's all been done and I've rust treated that's why it's all black I put rust treatment down the whole thing I wire brushed it and as much as I needed to it was basically okay there's a few, only a few bitch Bits which weren't great, but this bit is a seam, it's got like a little opening there where this is actually tack weld just there, it's been welded. And over here, there's also like tack welds over here as well. This has been done, so we've had repairs done in the past where I think it's had some ruin damage. And right here is where there's a join in panels, there's actually a panel edge right here, and right here is a crack in the paint. So I think there's actually a seam. And that's where it's cracking. I think water's got in here and it's run down the side panel here. I think there's lots of filler here. Well, I know there's lots of filler here. Obviously, we'd have smoothed it out and blended it in. And I think it's got surface rust behind the filler, which is why it's cracking. More rust repairs. So I know there's, there's some rust underneath the tail light under here. And I've taken the tail light out. Now, years ago, I actually siliconed this thing in because the seal was bad. They always go bad in these tail lights. So you, have to, you always have to replace the seals or seal them in some way, stop the water leaks. But because that had been going on for so long, it actually had some rusting under here. And I've actually been working on it already. I sort of wiped down the seams, so I've 
scrub the back seam here, the wire brush, and cut this out because this is actually all between here. So this frame here is that, and that's a skin just here for the lights assembly. So what I've actually got to do, I've got to cut this out because it's all up between the skin up here as well. It's all between those layers. So I've got to peel all this back, clean all that rust up. And obviously this is all rusted away anyway, so I'm actually going to cut it off and I'll replace with a new piece just in here. I'll get a bit of steel and make it up to fit. And obviously patch this hole up here, which is rusted right through. So it's a bit of work, but it needs doing. And the other side is similar, not quite as bad. Right, so there you go, I've had to cut this piece here out. Well, this piece in and glued it. I've, glued, I've rolled it in spots like along here, in here and around there. Um, but I've also done the sealant right behind the whole panel to completely seal behind so the water can't get in the back of it. Obviously down the sides as well. Also down the seam here, filled it up. Been scraping the silicon off here from the previous repair. Get in there, I'll get the rest of this off. Then I'll paint it and then I can refit the tail light. And hopefully that's the end of that problem. There you go, painted back in. Ready for the bumper pick on.